Good afternoon, everybody. Hello, hello. Um, I wanted to um, say hi and um, welcome to Live with Carla Nicole. So um, it is um, a beautiful Sunday. Actually, it's quite warm today, I'm surprised. Uh, it is definitely a sunny Sunday. So, you know, awesome to really um, have have a beautiful beautiful day and it's going to be pretty um, amazing so um, I wanted to talk today about uh, a very interesting topic um, a lot of people don't uh, really want to talk about this but I think it's important that we do as you know I am talking about or I kind of have this relationship series going discussing about um, sexual activity and um, and relationship issues and concerns. So today I want to talk about something that is immensely important, which is when do we stop having children? So um, first to criticize a little bit about the science behind having, I believe, women to extend out their um, time of having children, like you know, 50s, 60s, 70s having children. Um, Personally, I don't agree with it. I think it's out of order. I think that nature has pretty much shown that children after a certain age is really um, just not beneficial to the parent or the child. Um, see how, you know, many of you don't know this, but I am a child that was unplanned. I'm actually um, an adopted child, so I can really speak on this for the main reason um, I, I have a beautiful situation. I don't have any qualms or issues about the fact that I was an adopted child. I actually have a major and immense respect for my birth mother that gave me life and uh, decided to do something so selfless. So I wanted to talk about this because I think it's immensely important. My birth mother had like six children besides me. She had children in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. So she had quite a few children at the time. My thing is um, I think it's very important that um, as we are um, humans and we do have desires and we do have sex lives, it is very important that we're responsible about when it's time to say, you know what, having a child for me is not financially um, uh, the time anymore, um, psychologically, energetically. Um, emotionally, all of these things needs to be put into place when you're talking about having children. So um, just to give you a little background about me, I have two children. I have a daughter that is now grown, she's 18, and I have a son that is nine. Yes, that's a huge gap in between the two children. They're nine years apart. Crazy thing about it is when I decided to have my son, I had got married and I discussed with my, my husband at the time in marriage counseling that, listen, I am 34 at the time and I am not having any more children after 35. So with that said, if we do not have a child before 35 years old, it's a wrap. Why? Because I had to project in my mind, okay, um, you know, I'm 35 now. If I have a child now, I will be 53 when the child is walking that stage and graduating from high school, be it that all things go according to plan. Things happen, I get that, but I'm just projecting on a, on a normal situation. Because, you know, of course, you have children that may have disabilities. You have children that may shoot, get, graduate early. I mean, all kinds of stuff can happen. But on average, you know, you figure your child will graduate at 18, 19, or, or 17, depending on how their, how their birthdays fall. So I had to think about that. And I'm like, okay, I'll be 53. 53, I still pretty much have a thriving life, um, and hopefully, God willing, I will still be here to be able to take care and parent my child. So I thought about all of those things in advance, because I think when you think way past about yourself and not think about the child or the unborn child you're having, we spend a lot of time thinking about what our needs are. Well, I want a child. Well, okay, that's fine that you want a child, but let's think about what's, what's going to be the cost to that child if you have a child while you're too old if you have a child at 40 50 years old and then the child at 18 is walking a stage or 68 years old that is a lot for the child to lose a parent first and foremost 
at a, at a, at a, at a young age at 18, they're losing a parent or you don't even make it because you're, you know, you don't see 68. All of these things are important to me as a, as a person that had to put into place. What do I find important when it comes to child um, planning? Some people don't want to talk about it, but I think it's essential. One of the things that I'm, I'm really, I believe is important. If you have had children or if you are at a certain age, project in your mind what type of health you're in, project in your mind what type of parent you will be, project in your mind how you will help to be a parental guide for that child. If you are going to be ailing all the time because you're not in great health, you're not able to really focus as far as your own life, how are you going to bring a child in the world? So if we are honest, we are grown here, we are all being intimate with someone or we're in a, in a situation or we're in a marriage and it's going to be a financial burden to be a parent at this time, you need to sit down and talk about it. At this time, it needs to be discussed because you don't want to wait any longer. And I'm going to talk about some, some things that I think is important. Yes, you know, condoms and all of those birth control and everything like that is fine if that's what you choose to use for prevention of, of pregnancy. But my thing is this, you know, um, I'm big about health-wise. And if you're a woman and you're taking this birth control day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, because I weighed that as well. When you're taking and ingesting that birth control in your body all the time, you got to wonder what, chemi what chemically is happening in your inside your body. So I'm like, look, when I had my son, I had my son um, and I was already open and already pretty much decided before I was pregnant, well, before I had my child, I already decided that I was going to um, pretty much decided that, hey, I'm going to go ahead and um, since I already am open, have a tubal ligation. And I felt that that was at the time because, you know, I was questioned, are you sure? Um, you're still young, you know, you're 35. And I said, listen, I am telling you, I am sure, 110% sure. I knew when I had my son that I was, I'm done. So yes, go ahead and tie the tubes up and, and let's go ahead and make this final. I was in a marriage, so at the time I knew I was gonna be intimate. Why bring a child in, the, in another child in the world? And I'm not financially okay with that. I'm not psychologically okay with bringing more children because I just feel like it's not fair to, to bring another child into the world like that. So I thought about that and I was very, I was very um, intentional and I was very clear with my spouse at the time that I'm not having any more children at this point. I think it's important that I go ahead and do this. So, like I said, um, the reason why I decided with tubal ligation personally was because I really was not comfortable with birth control, um, Depo-Provera's and all those different type of shots and, 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 and chemicals going into my body. So I decided to go ahead and do a tubal ligation. Now I want to I want to get the I want you guys to get this because I think tubal ligations for women, um, if they're if they're pregnant and already are open, it is a great time to go ahead and get it done. If that's when you you're pretty much sure you're done with having children, if that's the case, go ahead and get it done while you're open. I think that's a great idea and and re really it it worked well for me. Um, and for me, I think that, you know, it's important that, you know, you discuss it with your partner um, because there is different um, recovery times. Now, I did my research about tubal ligations, and I'm just going to put it out there to let you ladies know that tubal ligations, um, it usually there's a recovery time of um, anywhere from a week to 14 days. Um, you can then begin sexual activity at the discretion of your physician. So you want to call your, you know, contact your physician and have them to give you uh, a clarity of when to be um, back sexually active. Um, now, um, for me, I was already having a child, so, you know, it was it was definitely an inpatient procedure for me, but it may be outpatient. I think if you're just going and getting the procedure done, you'll just want to check with your, your physician and ask him or her um, what it is or how long or what is the procedure, if it's inpatient or outpatient. Um, and then, of course, you, you will be responsible for your co-pays and things of that nature. So that's important. Um, also, the other thing is, 
for men. Now, I know gents, a lot of gents um, that are really connected to their machoism don't really want to cut the deal and, and be like, I'm done fathering or whatever because it's a connection to um, your lineage. So it's a legacy that you're concerned with passing on. And so with that said, um, men have a harder time, I understand from, from just different gentlemen I've talked to, that it's, a, it's a, a mental decision and it's very intense for men to decide to have a vasectomy. Now, um, vasectomies take about, um, it is a, it's an outpatient procedure for men. And um, the recovery time for men is about a week to 10 days. But of course, you know, resuming sexual activity for men as well, you need to consult your physician. And um, now what I understand is both of these procedures are 99% effective. So again, uh, you know, things happen. So there's times when maybe it doesn't go so well, but at least you know in your heart and mind that you did what you did to prevent having any more children. Because, you know, um, baby making is, is what it is, but it also is a responsibility to the person to be honest in themselves as to what type of parent after a certain age they will be to a child. I mean, you know, um, when we have our children young, our patience, I believe, our patience is different. Um, you know, we, we have a little or more, or more agile, or more physically able to chase around a child that's little. Um, you know, I see a lot of grandparents that are um, unfortunately um, taking care of a lot of children of their, of their daughters and sons that are not able to take care of their child for whatever reasons, whatever the circumstances that are. And unfortunately, um, you see the grandparent really struggling with trying to run in behind a child. Well, that's a lot because, you know, when you're young, it's easy to just run and chase a child down. But when you're older, it's, it's more toll on the body. It's more toll psychologically. Um, and like I said earlier, I think, you know, science extending uh, the time for a woman to have children like 70 and 80 years old, I just think it's very unfair. Um, I, I think that nature is what it is, that I think that menopause happens for a reason. Um, and, and I don't think that we need to try to go against science, I mean, go against, you know, the universe and what God set up to try to uh, make our needs what it is. And, and granted, um, infertility for, parents, for people that's trying to have children um, is an extreme tough thing to go through psychologically and, 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 and things of that nature. I mean, like I said, my parents um, went through infertility. And so, you know, I'm here because of a beautiful um, woman that decided to put me up for adoption and she gave me life and she gave me, um, you know, the blessing that I had. But the, but the reality is, you know, a lot of people don't see outside of, ooh, is this gonna be beneficial for me to have a child now? I mean, you really have to pay attention to not just your needs and your wants. You have to think about someone else is coming into the world. So it's important. And like I said, um, I can't come out here and discuss about sexual activity and intimacy and, and sex and love and relationships if I don't talk about the importance of uh, sterilization. <laughs> what are we going to do here? And understanding that, you know, even gentlemen, if you use condoms, that's great. You can even still use condoms after you have a vasectomy if you're not in a, you know, an intentional relationship. But sometimes those things break. <laughs> and so we need to be mindful of that. And if they break and you're not, you know, um, sterilized, then, of course, you can have a child, you know, a conception. And then now, if you are not psychologically ready, if you and that woman aren't in a good place and space with each other, then you're going to find yourself like, man, I thought that um, having a child was beneficial, but at the time it was detrimental to me because financially it's a lot of money to raise a child. It's not cheap. It's not, you know, it, it's beautiful. I love my kids, but it comes with responsibility a lot. And if we're not mindful of that, then we can find ourselves in between a rock and a hard place. So I just wanted to give you guys something about um, about this um, and, and realize that, you know, um, to be intimate um, is beautiful. 
but imagine being intimate without that worry because you know i believe personally worry um takes a toll on the body and i believe worry um actually i think fuels aging it, it really puts a toll on aging and us getting aged faster because if we're intimate and we're constantly worried oh you're gonna get pregnant oh my god what are we gonna do if you get pregnant and all this that is a worry that is taking a toll on your body also internally and we have to understand that if we have a a certain peace in our life a consistent peace or a um not even just that but a um a, 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 a peace of mind there's nothing better than that your peace of mind comes from not having to worry about if this condom breaks and she gets pregnant I'm going to die <laughs> that is not okay you do not want to have that burden on your head all the time when you're after you're intimate or you're always on edge after you you know you have sex or the condom broke and you don't know oh my god I'm not ready for this all of that stuff is is taking a toll on on many men's hearts and minds it doesn't make you less manly because you are sterilized actually it, it shows that you're grown it shows that you are responsible and you're taking yourself out of out of um, being all about yourself because it's easy to make a baby but to raise one's a whole different ball game and anybody that knows me knows that I tell people all the time look when it comes down to um, parenting it's one of the hardest roles in life, but it's beautiful. But if you parent and you don't have any type of peace because you're always stressed and you're always, you know, your patience is low because you just didn't plan on having this child, it is de definitely an issue. I also want to talk about something else that I know a lot of people don't want to talk about. Um, termination. Terminating pregnancy. Um, you know, um, another thing about termination, um, you know, that is a very stressful uh, situation for any couple to have to deal with. And when I say couple, I'm just meaning the two that may have gotten pregnant, maybe planned or unplanned, or even married. Sometimes it's just not the right time. Um, understand this, if you have to terminate a pregnancy because of this, you really need to get real with yourself and your partner as well about what you two want to do. Because at the end of the day, if this happens and you had to terminate a child or terminate a pregnancy, you now have to make a smart decision. You do not want to use termination of pregnancy as a birth control. Unacceptable. That should not be the case. You should not be going and getting abortion after abortion after abortion because you are being irresponsible about your your uh, child prevention or your birth control. So if you are not being responsible or you are using termination as a means of birth control, that is unacceptable and you're being very, very irresponsible in doing that. So I need you to consider sterilization procedures. Again, it's not because um, I'm trying to take away that person's, um, you know, manliness or feminine or femininity because she's not able to have children you still have a beauty regardless if you have children or not but if you're having termination after termination after termination that's not okay either because what is that doing to your body again you're going you're having someone go in invasively go into your body and terminate you don't know what that does to your body so again you have to be mindful of that as well um, and then I, I'll put it out there about miscarriages. Now, miscarriages are one of the most hardest things that women have to endure and go through. Um, miscarriages are psychologically just, it, it's psychological. It's a heart, heartfelt, very saddened thing for women that have carried a child. And, and they have to um, now go through um, the disheartened situation of, you know the loss of the child um, you know I, I just want there to be compassion for those women or that man that has had a planned child and okay what happens when you um, lose that child very difficult so you want to be mindful of that so again um, sterilization is important 
sterilization is definitely key to making sure that you don't have all this burden of worry on your heart and mind. And you will find more people um, that do have this, they have a, they have a sense of, of peace because they don't have to worry about it. Now what I, hey, hey Phyllis, I see you. So Phyllis has something that she said. She said that it, it can also cause scarring in the uterus and other problems can impede you from conceiving in the future. So she's discussing about the termination. Am I right, Phyllis, you're talking about the termination, continual um, terminations going on um, with women. So if you are using termination as a birth control, you can also be um, damaging, like she said, your, your uterus. Um, and it can impede uh, huge problems for you to conceive when you are ready, yeah, that's what I thought, when you are ready to conceive. So this is important that you think about, um, you don't want to use termination as a means of birth control. So I just wanna put that out there. Um, I think it's important that we're mindful about what it is we need to do when it comes to prevention of pregnancy. So the reason why I wanted to drop this live today is I know it was a little touchy, it was a little sensitive conversation about this issue, but gentlemen, please do not hesitate to seal the deal. If you are not financially ready, if you are not in a relationship that you ha are having intentions on getting married, if you are okay with not having any children or any more ch children because you're done, please, if, you're, if you have children out here and you're struggling just to take care of that one, why have yourself in more burden by getting bringing on more children? I know men, you love to be macho and I can have kids and all that. That don't mean nothing if you can't take care of them. So I'm a need for y'all that are on the fence about, well, I don't know. Listen, talk to your physician, talk to him and tell him, look, I'm really not financially where I need to be. And even if I was financially where I need to be, I still am really not gung ho about having more children. Then go ahead and do you. And, 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 and understand that any woman that is involved with you or wants to be involved with you, and nine times out of 10, most of the women have children anyway, but if she doesn't have children, be honest with her. Let her know I don't, you know, I have a vasectomy and I don't want any more kids. And then let that be what it is. So women that you are interested in are clear. Same with you ladies. If you are involved with, with a gentleman and he wants, you know, wants more children and you've had this type tubal ligation done. Now let me explain too, before I go off on this tangent, you can have them reversed. That is your choice. You can have them reversed. There is an option to reverse the tubal ligation or to reverse the vasectomy. Um, but with me working for insurance, I'm just here to tell you that it is not covered to get it reversed. So it will be an out of pocket expense. But if that is something that you wanna do, be mindful that you're projecting in your mind, okay, I will be this age by the time the child is this age. Because you don't wanna be elderly trying to run behind a child. It's very difficult. I see a lot of, like I said, I see a lot of grandparents struggling with that and I really wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It is a lot of work and it is a lot of responsibility. So back to what I was saying before that. Ladies, if you're involved with a gentleman that, excuse me, um, that you are interested in and he is still desiring to have children and you cannot please be open and honest with him let him know like look i i've got this tool ligation done and i made the decision based on the, on the fact that i don't want to have any more children be clear don't play games don't act like well i'm just gonna you know get him to where you love him and all this stuff or get him to where he loves you and then you tell him well i really don't want kids and then it's a burden on the relationship be open and honest about what you're doing and understand with this decision you make, it may not be favorable for everybody. So if you are interested in someone and they really don't want children or they do want children and you don't, hey, that may be a deal breaker. You may just want to remain friends or friends with benefits. So, I mean, that's just important, but you want to make sure that you're clear from the jump. Okay, so, hey, I, I, like I said, these, these lives are going so fast, so quick. I cannot tell you it's already been 25 minutes. This show is already over. I hope I gave you guys some information that you can you can use. Please share this because someone on your timeline most likely is maybe on the fence or really doesn't know how they feel about it. I tried to give information, um, but you know, anytime I give me medical information, I'm still encouraging you to talk to your physician um, about the clear recovery times, about what is best for you because everybody's recovery time may be different. Um, also. 
uh, just to let you know, October 21st, um, if you guys have been watching my stuff, um, the last word panel, uh, my guys that, you know, um, come out here and talk about commitment and relationships, we will be having an event in, in uh, Dayton, Ohio at the Third Perk Coffee House. Anybody that wants to come, I'd love to have you. I'm looking for vendors that wants to be a part of this. Um, look, you know, uh, we want you guys to vibe out with them. They're going to talk about, you know, from a men's, man's perspective about relationships. I mean, I can give you the girly stuff, but these guys are kind of raw. Like, they're telling you some information that I think is intricate and important for us to gain some traction and learning how to reconnect back to, um, you know, male-female relationships and marriages or, or, or significance or commitments. And I think if we get more clarity on that from a man's perspective, maybe we can learn to balance it out. So um, you guys will get to know um, these guys individually. You're going to see them vibing out. We're going to be at a coffee house. Cleavon is um, one of the panelists, and that is where he works. So he encouraged us to come there and do this event. Um, they all believe in my vision, which is to eventually have all these guys on tour and make that happen. So anybody that, that's interested in, in wanting to help me build that vision, please inbox me because I'm, I'm serious about gaining some traction on um, making that happen. So um, again, um, listen, don't hesitate about baby making. It's essential. It is important. It is um, very selfless to consider someone else besides yourself. Um, when it comes to, you know, making a decision to be a parent or not. So, I'm gone. Uh, I appreciate everybody. Thanks, Perry, James, Phyllis, all you guys for being here. Larry, so glad you came out. Joseph, Jay, A, Judah, Zach, thank you all for being here. So glad you were here and, and shared your 30 minutes with me. Um, again, share this, like I said, because we need, we need this to be just as important for everybody as so the sex conversation. So... Um, enjoy your Sunday. Be safe. Carla Nicole signing off. That's Kev. Have a good day. Bye.